You ever have a cough that tastes like a banana? The man asks, rubbing his stomach as he plops down in the seat next to the seemingly nice lady listening to music. I'm sorry, what? Francine removes her headphones. Moved by the product placement in one of Lady Gaga's music videos, she had raced to the store and snatched up the latest pair of Beats by Dre. The headphones were engineered to be isolating and soundproof to make sure the user could hear Dre's sick beats, and Francine hadn't heard what the man had said when he sat down next to her. Francine assumes it was something like, Do you mind if I sit here? But she can never be too sure. Francine once assumed that her teacher had her best interests at heart, but then he taught her about evolution. Now she doesn't take anyone's intentions for granted. She will always ask for clarification, no matter how embarrassing. I said the man coughs up an endless stream of brand new, unpeeled, fresh off the tree bananas. Francine never in her 48 years had seen anything like that. She had prepared herself to see some wild stuff when she arrived in San Francisco to crash her son's gay wedding before the abomination could occur, but she didn't think that the weirdos would be evident in the airport. Francine places the back of her hand to her forehead and dramatically passes out over her luggage, smashing her new headphones in the process. By now, the gate attendant, Margot, has called security. The entire flight gathers around and watches as the man coughs up more and more perfectly ripe bananas. Margot senses something deep inside herself that causes her to step in and intervene for the man. It might have been the pleading in his eyes, but Margot wasn't sure. Margot just knew she had to break up the audience and get the man some medical attention. She grabs the phone off the wall to make an announcement over the intercom. Attention Delta passengers, please evacuate gate B-14 until further notice due to an ongoing medical emergency. Thank you. Before she had even finished the announcement, a lady makes a beeline for the desk to demand a refund, while the rest of the flight follows the instructions and heads to the other gate across the way. Though the man choked and choked, coughed and pleaded with his eyes for help as the bananas slowly snaked out of his stomach, seemingly from nothing, the woman from Minnesota demands that Margot process a refund, which costs her valuable time. Finally, after what seems like an eternity to Margot and the man, the medics and TSA arrive. The medics, led by a young woman named Melissa, instantly prioritize care of Francine, who is still passed out and slumped over her broken Beats by Dre headphones. It is the TSA, actually, that swoops in to help the man by binding his wrists with zip ties, throwing him gagging onto the back of their golf cart and speeding off to their holding room. Francine, startled back awake by a smelling salt waved in her face by the young EMT, asks for a Tylenol for a splitting headache that, she claims, began when she cracked her big fat noggin on her Beats by Dre headphones. She rests her head on the pillow provided by Melissa and stares at the pile of bananas left behind by the man. They are so shiny, so ripe, so enticing. Francine isn't sure why, but she is overcome with the desire to eat one of the bananas. She imagines ripping one open and biting into its soft, mushy flesh and her mouth waters. Without thinking, she reaches out and grabs one of the bananas, peels it, and takes a bite. Over the sound of the paramedic puking in her mouth, Francine experiences her first ever orgasm. Prompted by the unbelievably delicious and fresh bananas, Francine unleashes her inner woman and confirms to herself that she really has been faking it with her husband for all these years. Try as she might, she had never taken to having sex with Randall. Married right out of high school, the two had only slept with each other, and without much world experience in the sex department, had not known what they were missing. Francine cries as she finishes her banana, knowing that she will spend the rest of her days chasing the high of that first and only orgasm. Meanwhile, in the TSA holding room, the man continues to gag and choke up bananas as tears stream down his cheeks. The TSA agents have tied him to a chair and are examining every banana that comes out of him with an x-ray wand. Lead TSA agent Rick Schrodinger opens the door and overturns the table full of bananas and gets into the man's face. Identify your terrorist organization now, he screams into the banana man's face as three more bananas fall onto his lap. Schrodinger slaps banana man across the face as hard as he can. 
Banana Man cries out in pain, but does not stop viciously choking up the fully formed bananas. A left hook, a right hook, an uppercut to the jaw. Rick tries everything he can to get the man to talk, but instead, the bloodied and bruised Banana Man just keeps coughing up delicious and ripe bananas. Sir, I think you're going to want to see this. Pally Fistowitz, a local criminology student and intern, says... She's in charge of watching the wall of surveillance monitors, a thankless and unpaid but literally life-saving job. Pally leads Schrodinger into the other room and points at the middle monitor. The monitor shows a group of people grabbing from the pile of bananas from earlier. Prompted by the formerly passed out woman and her experiences, they surmise from the footage, the group is eating bananas and having a group orgasm. Left and right, tourists from all over eat the man's bananas and experience life-changing orgasms. Skeptics have their minds changed by the sight of their friends and spouses rocked to their core in a real orgasm for the first time. If they had a real one, could I? Rick Schrodinger cannot believe his eyes. He marches back into the room with the banana man and waits as the next hot, fresh banana pops out of his mouth. He peels the still warm banana and tastes it. Oh my god, I'm gay, he says with banana in his mouth as he falls to the floor and seizes in a wild orgasm. Rick Schrodinger passes away instantly after, his heart too weak at 55 for such an incomprehensible violent orgasm. Banana Man continued to choke up bananas for the next 15 years before he too had a heart attack and died instantly. In the interim, a big corporation took him hostage and marketed his bananas as sex objects, which were an instant success. One by one, every single person in the world, every man, woman, and child, tasted one of the Orgasmo bananas. Sort of like the successful eradication of disease by mass vaccination, when every last person on Earth had experienced their first real orgasm through the bananas, Banana Man's heart stopped beating. No one knows who the Banana Man was, what his name was, or if he himself had ever had an orgasm, and besides the words he had said to Francine on that fateful day all those years ago, which she hadn't even heard, no one had ever heard his voice. His desires were never known, his thoughts never verbalized, he could only be reached and known through his eyes. Those eyes were bloodshot. From 15 years of sobbing and dry heaving up thousands and millions and quite literally billions of bananas out of thin air and birthing them into the world through his throat. No one ever provided him medical care or tried to stop the bananas in any way. They only exploited him for their own gain. Banana Man didn't mind, though, as he smiled down from heaven. He was at peace, knowing that he had made all seven billion people come to orgasm over the span of only 15 years, a feat God himself had told him would be impossible. Banana Man dons his angel wings and heads to Jesus' mansion just down the golden-bricked road from his own stunning gold-plated mansion. If Jesus was anything like his mother, the Virgin Mary, boy, <laughs> was he in for a big surprise when Banana Man shows up with one of his bananas. Banana Man smiles and says his real name out loud just one time for the hell of it. Frank Lloyd Wright, the famous architect, and teleports to Jesus to make him come for the first time. And that was Banana Man, a bizarre story I wrote the other night. I'm moving to Georgia. Spoiler alert, if you didn't know, um, if I haven't texted you in a while, it's because I'm isolating myself and I'm... Um, in a weird state because of the world that we're in. But listen, I'm okay. We're all doing okay. But listen, I'm moving to Georgia. My lovely girlfriend and incredible life partner, Taylor, has been accepted into a graduate school in Savannah, Georgia, and we are approved for an apartment down there, so it's pretty official. We are moving to Georgia. And in the meantime, that means packing up a bunch of shit and going through it and seeing what you want and seeing what you don't want and what do you want to keep. And the one thing that I'm keeping right now that, you know, is kind of weird is the entire series of Parks and Recreation. Now, I've got it on, and on DVD. Now, really, now, really, in the middle of me recording, it really has to tell me I averaged 19 minutes of screen time on my goddamn laptop last week. Really? 
can't it can't this fucking computer be smart enough to know that I'm using an audio recording software and not to fucking do something with a notification sound? Come on. The fucking thing was like $1,200. I didn't buy it. I'm not bragging. I don't want you to think I'm trying to brag. It was a gift from a person I no longer speak to, my father. But listen, it was $1,200. You can't, you mean to tell me that the computer doesn't know I'm recording something right now with a microphone and that if it played a fucking sound that it was going to be recorded on the audio? Come on. I mean, Steve Jobs should be rolling in his grave. I don't mean to speak ill of the dead, but listen, I, if, you, if you're a true fan, if you're a true, true fan, you know I used to have a video up on some channel, mine, a friend's, I don't even know, some channel of me recording myself on my friend's iPad bitching about the iPad that I had and talking ill of Steve Jobs. It's what prompted me to post a Steve Jobs tribute video, music video to the song uh, Fix You by Coldplay when he passed away because I felt so bad that mere weeks before his death, I was ridiculing him. And I mean truly ripping him to shreds because the iPad that I had didn't have an SD port, an SD card. And to, the, this, to this day, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have an SD port, but who the fuck knows who has an iPad? Apparently, everybody at OSU, because every every student at OSU, Lima, that apparently got a fucking uh, iPad and a, and a, what is it, Apple Pencil, all this other shit. Why? I mean, I get it. Students can use it, but come on. Come on. Now we're in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Where's all the money? Yeah, they got us a they got us a refund. They got us a stimulus, and some people at OSU got a little bit of a little bit of the CARES Act stimulus. Hey, well, thank you. Yeah, well, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say to that. Anyway, I'm keeping the Parks and Recreation DVD be the complete series because right now it's a nice. Uh, it's a nice rise. It's a nice uh, platform for my microphone stand so that I don't have to bend over because I'm that lazy. I've only actually used the DVDs to uh, ever watch the special features uh, with my friend Royal Nicholas Benton. We sat down and watched every single special feature on all seven seasons. Seven? Yeah, seven seasons. Uh, and... Uh, but I haven't actually used it to actually watch the series. Now, Taylor hasn't seen the series. And at some point, we're going to watch the series. And, yeah, we could watch it on Netflix, and most likely we will. But sometimes, you know, you sometimes you know your Wi-Fi gets shut off. <laughs> or at least mine has multiple times in my life. Hey, but I'm 24, almost 25. A lot of people at work don't know that. They think I'm, like, 19 and 20. But, no, even though I'm young at heart, I'm... I'm I'm getting up there. I'm about to have my quarter life crisis, my one third life crisis, I should say, because ultimately the old life expectancy is 75. Hey, I'm okay, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Parks and Recreation, I'm going to keep it. Full House, I'm going to keep it. Every time my Wi Fi's out, I'm watching Full House. I'm glad they put it on Hulu, though, but listen, I'm not going to watch it. And every time I watch it, you know I'm just going to be thinking about Aunt Becky. I'm just a small-town boy from Appalachia.